Welcome back one and all to yet another edition of WDW After Dark, a show for fans by fans. And it's brought to you every single week by our good friends at MagicalJourneysVacations.com. Kristen, you just talked about a travel deal on the last episode. And once again, people can save money by booking with you because uh, uh, once again, you have so much great knowledge and you can help them save money and enjoy further enjoy their Disney vacation. Um, so Kristen, where can people reach you once again for all the great Disney deals? MagicalJourneysTravel.com. Okay. So uh, go ahead and uh, MagicalJourneysVacations.com. Yes. Did I say what I you said? said MagicalJourneysTravel.com. <laughs> Magical That's journeys my email. Vacations.com. Ah. And uh, go ahead and give her when 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 she gets a moment, she'll she'll come back to Earth. I promise, and uh, she will definitely hook you up with great travel deals um, that are coming as well. Uh, also, you want to make sure you check out Amazon because uh, we have tons of stuff coming up. You want to make sure your kids are getting ready for the D twenty three Expo. Maybe you want to dress up as a family and get some Halloween costumes for for the convention and dress up uh, as members of Big uh, Big Hero Six. Uh, maybe you want to dress up as characters from Tangled. Maybe you want to dress up as the Avengers. I don't know. But uh, you can do it together as a family and on a budget because you can save money and support the show by clicking on our link to Amazon and make it happen. And right now, let's go ahead and move on with our discussion for this week, which is preparing for the D23 Expo. Now, whether you've been to the D23 Expo before or any type of Comic-Con, there are certain rules that I think uh, that you have to adhere to um, before we get into all that stuff uh, to avoid confunk uh, or to in- maximize and enjoy your, your time at the convention, Jeff, because you're a, a comic book convention goer. Kristen, Kristen and I both do that. What are some things do you think are must-need items for you to survive? And uh, uh, of course, Jeff is the host of DW60 on Sorcerer Radio. Jeff, what would you say is in your must must have backpack for this? Uh, well, yeah, first and foremost, the backpack. Um, and, and make sure it's a good size backpack. Sometimes at some uh, you know, Comic Cons or Expos or anything else, door, there's usually a vendor or somebody who is handing out um some type of a bag uh for you to put stuff in. Um, kind of like those bags, you know, those non throw throwawayable bags you get at the grocery store that you can always keep, so you don't have to use plastic or anything. Usually, you know, something like that. But you know, bring, hmm, gosh, bring your charger for your cell phone. Number one, bring an external battery for your cell phone, external uh, regular batteries for your regular cameras or anything else. Um, bring a pen any type of autographs or anything else and meeting, uh, you know, different uh, celebrities and stuff like that. Uh, Sometimes pens run out. It's always good for you to have a pen. Um, If you're a vlogger, a blogger, a podcast person or anything else, make some business cards, hand out your business cards. Um, Bring a good amount of cash because usually food is not cheap when it comes to these conventions. Uh, They do like to price things a little bit high occasionally. Um, and it's, it's so hard to try and plan out, uh, and a, a pattern of attack to tackle all of this different stuff. Because when you walk into these places, there are so many booths, there are so many vendors and there's so much to see, you know, in, in the back of your mind, what you've read ahead before, oh, I want to check out this person. Or I want to see this person. But then you see all the extra vendors that are there and everything that you did plan kind of goes out the door. And what I do is I just go up and down every single aisle. I start on one side and I end on the other side. Mm-hmm. Um, it's 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 difficult, but um, you know, little things like that usually help out, um, especially if you're you know wanting to meet people and talk to people and uh, do interviews or anything else like that. And be patient. Be very very patient, especially when it comes to the D twenty three Expo, because you know merchandise lines are going to be extremely long. Uh, lines to get into the panels are going to be extremely long. So be patient uh, with your kids, uh, your family. Be patient with uh, you know the people that are running the expo and everything else. Don't get all mad at them and everything else. Use a lot of patience when you go to these things because they're doing the best that they can to keep everything moving as well as possible. We saw major problems when it came to 
uh, the Star Wars convention convention uh, that uh, Eric went to um, celebrations and um, just the line initially to get in to the, the uh, convention center there, they said was like over a mile long and people were waiting three to four hours in line just to be able to do stuff, getting very frustrated. So just they, they, from what I understand, they do really well in Anaheim and usually things move pretty smoothly. Uh, so try not to worry, but just enjoy yourself and uh, take lots of pictures. Take lots of pictures. That's sure. Sure. Remember it, you know? Yeah. Take a picture. It'll last longer. It does. You know, Kristen, uh, you you are also a, a veteran of uh, convention going and also the D23 convention. Do you have any tips for our viewers today? Let's see. Definitely be patient. If you are somebody who easily gets bored, like myself, you need to bring something to keep you occupied because sometimes you're going to be waiting a very long time in line to see something some of these panels people camp out overnight to see yeah. so i recommend bringing like a a book or something like that with you um you can always bring a kindle but should you bring something that is an electronic um your phone your camera uh anything that can record uh, including, I mean, pretty much any electronic, de uh, electronic device, they are going to take that from you at select panels when they are showing things like um, the Disney movies coming up and concept art and things like that. They don't allow those things. Um, so last time they put them in, they sealed it up in a bag and you could take it in. Um, however, they do have people that have, that, that are there throughout to look and see if a device is tur gets turned on. So if your device gets turned on, there's a good chance they're going to take it from you. And you don't want to have that happen. So should you take an electronic a a device? I'm having problems talking today. Um, just be prepared for it to be sealed um, with some of those panels like that. Um, as Jeff mentioned, bring a pen. I always bring two Sharpies. I bring a black and a silver one. That way, depending on what you're getting signed, if it's something dark, you've got the silver Sharpie. If it's something light, you've got the black Sharpie. And that way it's permanent too. You don't have to worry about that getting, uh, you know, wiped off or whatever. Um, let's see, what else? I can tell you what I bring all the time to avoid bottled confunk. Bottled water. Yes, bottled water. You and need snacks. To bring, you need to bring bottled water because you want to stay hydrated. And sometimes it's just not easy to go and get something to drink. And uh, you definitely want to do that. Bring hand sanitizer because <laughs> chances are you're going to be shaking hands with a lot of people and meeting a lot of people. And you don't want to get sick when you're at a convention. That is not fun. So um, do that. Wear comfy shoes, whether it's Crocs or, you know, a pair of sandals or broken in tennis shoes. Nike, Nike shoes, you know, wear whatever is, is comfortable because you will be on your feet a lot and for a really long time. So um, definitely do that. Bring some deodorant or body spray. So should it get too hot wherever you are and you start getting a little sweaty, you don't offend others. <laughs> Please. Um, yeah, that's that's a really important wow. one. <laughs> Isn't it though? I mean, you go to these things, you know, every time I go to the parks, I bring extra, you know, body spray and deodorant, but I do that at the conventions too, because you don't want to offend anyone in line. That's the worst ever. Then people are looking at you like, man, this guy, he just is ripe. Or the celebrity you're meeting. <laughs> that would not be good. Yeah. You imagine, Jeff, you, you go up and you meet Ashley Eckstein in line, and she's like, oh, thank you so much for watching Star Wars, The Clone Wars, or Star Wars Rebels, and you give her a hug, and she's like, oh, no. <laughs> yeah. be bad. She'd never do that because she's a, she's a pro, but you, know, you don't want to offend her, you know? Yeah, <laughs> of course. Or of course. Scarlett Johansson. You know, Lord forbid you meet Scarlett Johansson, Jeff, and all bets are off. 
but uh, I, I agree. You know, I mean, you got to you got to be able to take snacks, hand sanitizer. Um, I always take. Uh, Kristen and I love uh, getting artwork at these things, so you might want to take one of those postal tubes that you mail posters and stuff in um, so that you can roll up your poster, not fold it and then keep it nice and pristine. And it should be a see-through um, uh, see-through tube this year. So you need to be able to make sure that you uh, do the see-through thing um, so that people can see what you're putting inside that, that tube. Um, the other thing you might want to consider doing if you're going to be wearing a costume is making sure you, um, you know that you do it's, it's good that you do wear costumes at these things people have a good time wearing costumes but make sure it's comfortable um and make sure that if you want to change out of it you bring an extra change of clothes and things like that because uh maybe you don't want to be in that costume all day um i i think uh i always you know and the bag jeff had mentioned is so important but definitely bring snacks and bottled water and hand sanitizer those are like my main things i know that my regimen every time i do a trade show we either either i work it or attend it i'm also drinking like emergency in the morning just to make sure i i have you know good stamina and and i feel good all day and i'm i'm you know my my body doesn't get run down so those are just some quick tips and tricks uh, you want to make sure that you cover as much as you can ahead of time by downloading the D23 Expo app and checking out all the great different uh, convention uh, programming that's going on and uh, making that part of your schedule. I mean, as Jeff said, sometimes all bets are off when you hit the show floor. I can't tell you how many times Kristen and I have attended a convention and we always had this agenda of what panels we wanted to check out, but we just found the floor so much more interesting. So we decided to just roam around the floor and yeah. take video of yeah. that. And yeah, and that's what it is. And you might meet up with friends and, and such. And we, we hosted many uh, meetups in the past. And uh, sometimes that's just the way the cookie crumbles if you will. But uh, let's delve in. And thank you for those great tips, everybody. Jeff, do you have some more tips? What cost us is something that I always had to do with my friend Rob because he would always do the cosplay thing when we'd go to a Comic-Con. Read the guidelines uh, that they put forth as far as uh, your costumes go and what you can and cannot bring in because a lot of these costumes do... Um, some of them involve weapons and certain types of weapons and everything else, and not every convention allows that type of stuff. So read those gu guidelines because there's nothing worse getting everything put on, you know, getting up there, you're about to uh, get your ticket and everything else, you got to go past security. Oh, sorry, you can't bring that in. So what you have to do is now you're going to have to turn around, go back to your vehicle or go back to your hotel and you're going to have to put that away and then go all the way back over to the convention center again. So read those guidelines and adhere to them and don't give security any problems. They're just doing their job. So keep yes. the unwanted stuff at home. Read ahead. Exactly right. Um, you want to make sure you adhere to those standards. And there are uh, there is a fact file that is there for the D23 Expo there. If you check out d23.com slash d23-expo. Uh, you can check all that out. I'm going to have that in the show notes as well. But uh, yes, uh, I think it'd probably be very prudent for you to maybe uh, keep the f uh, keep the weapons at home um, in terms of fake weapons. Of course, that's what I'm talking about. You know, the fake blasters and all that. Um, you know, so just uh, use your your better judgment and and uh, and have a good time. Once again, the D23 Expo this year, the ultimate Disney fan event, takes place. July 14th through 16th this year, 2017, at the Anaheim Convention Center. And right now, single-day tickets for Friday and Sunday are available. Saturday's completely sold out, folks. However, wow. if you want to gain access to the Saturday, you want to make sure you get the three-day ticket. And if you join the D23 um, and become part of the D23 uh, family, you'll be able to get uh, discounted tickets as well. So there are... Uh, advantages for membership. Of course, you can even become a free member. There's different levels of membership for the D23 convention as well. As it stands right now, if you get your um, your tickets, uh, uh, the three-day passes for an adult is $164 for a D23 member and $203. Um, oh, I'm sorry, $230 for non-member. I'm sorry. That would be... Wow. 
<laughs> I take it back. I take that back. That was early bird tickets. So uh, right now we're not <laughs> an early bird anymore. We are the D23 members. You will have to pay $207 for a three day ticket. And the child's uh, D23 membership ticket is $153. Non members, it goes up to $238 for adults for a three day and $174 for a child for a three day pass. Now, if you wanted single day tickets, D23 members for one day passes of right now, as I said, available uh, Friday and Sunday, you're looking at $72 and $53 respectively, and non members, $81 to $59 for adult and children. So be sure you get them as they are available. Tickets will probably end up selling out the day of for those events. And uh, you want to make sure that you have access to all of the great programming for the D23 convention. So uh, uh, it does pay to be a member if you want to save up, especially for your family, because I believe there's also uh, perks that we can get into, hopefully, if we have time. But, uh, Jeff, you've got information regarding the Disney parks and resorts. I think that's probably one of the biggest things uh, that's going to be coming out during the D23 Expo this year. Why don't you go ahead and tell us about all that? Oh, I completely lost that page. I can't. Oh, <laughs> it's the first link <laughs> in the chat. I put it in the chat. <laughs> completely told. I had the gaming one up and ready to oh, yeah, go. The game, okay. All right. All right. All right. Fair enough. Why did you tell us about all the great games, Jeff? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I was For stuck on it because I saw oh, this poster on the website and I was like, oh gosh, I absolutely love this. Oh, sure. uh, go for it. You go know, on. Level Up, Walt Disney Company's video game showcase is probably going to be a very, very big uh, event when it comes to D23. Uh, experience never before seen gameplay, trailers, special guests, other f unforgettable surprises from across Disney, Star Wars, Marvel game uh, portfolios, and this must-see showcase. Uh, Jimmy Patero, uh, chairman of DCPI, will kick off the pre presentation, which will feature many show-stopping moments, including announcements from Marvel and a whole lot more. One of the big, two big ones that are probably going to hit uh, D23 this year. Recently at uh, the E3 convention, uh, Star Wars Battlefront 2 is already, uh, they've you know showcased the new trailer, they've shown gameplay, uh, people have had the opportunity to play this brand new game, and they're finally giving the fans of Battlefront what they asked for in the very first game. They were asking for the Clone Wars, they were asking for uh, the original trilogy stuff that wasn't included in the original Battlefront, and you're all getting that along with stuff from The Force Awakens, playable characters uh, like Darth Maul, like Rey, and a few others that a lot of people were asking for. And Battlefront 2 looks absolutely phenomenal. It EA is doing going to do a fantastic job. I'm very, very, I play a lot of Battlefront. I was somewhat happy with you know, what they did as far as the first one goes. But this one here, as, as Al John is showing you right here, uh, this gameplay footage is just absolutely amazing. Uh, the uh, engine that they've used for the graphics is nothing short of just cinematic in a lot of ways. Uh, so you'll play as stormtroopers. You'll play as the clone troopers. You'll play um, as the Trade Federation droids and so much more. I mean, there's just so much. Get to visit Naboo, as you see right here, and, and get to fly those speeders. Um, it's going to be fantastic. But also, a lot of people really, really excited about the brand new, and they've been talking about this for a few years now, Kingdom Hearts 3. There are some very, very dedicated, and I do mean dedicated, Kingdom Hearts players out there. And um, this one is sure to be fantastic. They've even done, not reboots, but um, they've revisited the old Kingdom Hearts uh, series uh, recently with uh, 1.5 and 2.5, uh, just to name a few, adding a few extra le levels and new Disney characters uh, as well uh, with all this. So that is going to be a big one because a lot of people very, very excited. And I also heard, and I don't know if this was confirmed or not, Originally, Kingdom Hearts series was, series was only available via the PlayStation uh, with Sony. From what I hear, it's also going to be available for you Microsoft Xbox players as well. That's what I heard. I don't know if that's confirmed or not. Maybe you'll find that out at the D23 Expo. But it, there's a good chance of it, and uh, Kingdom Hearts is going to be fantastic. My friend Rob has played every single game. He has maxed out 
his character in every single Kingdom Hearts game. He is extremely excited about this. I, I like Kingdom Hearts a lot. It's a great so, franchise. It, I've got a few games is. myself. Unfortunately, I don't have or have time to finish the game, but um, yeah. <laughs> Kristen always hooked me up with Kingdom Hearts for uh, for the console. And uh, and let me go back to Battlefront. It is one of the few games that would make me want to buy a next generation console. It's wouldn't it help, right? Yeah, it, it really it looks is so good. It, it looks does. so incredibly good. Not that the original Battlefront looked bad. Um, it was it was like any game from EA uh, recently within the last five or six years. It starts off really buggy, and you have to go through a good six to seven you know updates uh, to the game before a lot of the bugs are gone. Uh, but hopefully, you know, they like the original Battlefront. They have worked on this for a long time, and they have listened to the players. They have listened to the gamers that have been playing the game and given them what they've asked for. So I, I'm very, very optimistic about it, and I'm hoping that at the D23 Expo, they're going to show us uh, a little bit more as far as uh, what you can do, can and cannot do when it comes to Battlefront 2. And the other thing I did forget to mention, not only do you have the multiplayer, on various different planets and everything else. But there's finally going to be a solo actual story to the game of a brand new Star Wars character. Uh, I can't remember what her name is, but I know she's uh, part of the Empire. And goes. it's an entire story throughout the game, which a lot of people were wanting in the original Battlefront uh, from a couple of years ago, did not get that. Uh, so they'll have that along with the multiplayer, which of course will also be very, very popular. So... But, but it's not just those two things. It's Marvel games. You're going to see mobile games. All kinds of different things going to be involved in this level up showcase that the Disney company is going to be doing. So it's going to be fantastic. And uh, can't wait to see the results of it all. Yeah, I tell you, you know, Kristen and I had attended the Disney game session um, a couple years ago for the, the D23 convention. And lo and behold, we ended up getting a special Mickey Mouse and... Um, uh, another figure, and I think we ended up getting a special, get a special coin, disc. a special disc for Disney Infinity, which was only available there. And I think uh, people are still selling it for a lot of money. But um, I yeah, think that was, I'm going to have to sell mine. Yeah, it, it goes. Uh, yeah, it goes without saying that uh, it, there's always special things uh, for those uh, convention goers. And I think if you attend the the gaming panel, you'll probably also be thrown in for a beta. I think uh, for some of those games, as well as a special console, like uh, in years past, they've always given out a special uh, tricked out console for D23. And yeah. uh, I think that's going to be great as well. And uh, once again, I, I, I'm looking forward to that. It's going to be a lot of fun in the pavilion. We'll also have a lot of really cool games for you to check out as well as yeah. they normally do. Yeah. So uh, last exciting. couple of D23 expos, you know, it was. Um, of even uh, Disney Infinity, you know, was the big showcase and what they were coming out with that. Now, of course, with the, you know, Infinity gone and no longer around, Disney is focusing on so many other different things. They just recently had a Guardians of the Galaxy game come out uh, for both a story type game uh, for both consoles. So Disney's decision to get rid of Infinity has beefed up production on so many other Disney characters and movies and everything else which is sure to be fantastic. So even though a lot of us loved Infinity, you're seeing the result of other games coming out from the Disney company and Marvel and Star Wars as a result of it. So um, it's sure to be a pretty good panel and a showcase of uh, different games and everything. So. Sure thing. Thanks, Jeff. Um, oh, you're going to be hitting on Parks in a, in a second. Kristen, yeah. there's uh, there's other things, I think, that, uh, that would interest you. Um, what do you have on tap? Well, I always like collectibles and of course they're going to have um, what they're calling the Disney designer collection. And previously this was the Disney fairy tale designer collection. Um, and it says this year it's going to have Pinocchio and Mulan as well as the Incredibles. So I think that's going to be pretty cool. Um, it says D23 Expo's at attendees can also preview and pre-purchase five limited edition dolls. And it's going to be for The Little Mermaid, Tangled, Robin Hood, Moana, and 101 Dalmatians. 
Nice. Um, there's also some cool Star Wars stuff, including apparel, accessories, drinkware. I like the coffee mugs they have. Um, it says they're going to feature iconic hero and villain duos. So there's going to be Princess Leia and Darth Vader, uh, Rey and Kylo Ren, Jen Erso, and director uh, Orso. Orson uh, Krennic. Thank you. Um, <laughs> it says each duo will be seventy nine ninety five, and there's a limited of one thousand of them. Uh, they're doing milestone anniversaries, and it says uh, Oswald the Lucky Rabbit's ninetieth, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs' eightieth, and Bambi's seventy five um, or seventy fifth. So there will be things for those. Um, they're doing a Minnie Mouse collectible collection. So it's all about her uh, spotted wardrobe. There's going to be a limited edition mini doll for Marvel. Uh, for the first time ever, Disney Store will be offering a Marvel collection. And it's going to feature limited edition collectibles, a pin set, lithograph set, and ornament set. Of course, one of our favorite people, Ashley Eckstein, is going to be there with her universe hey. she's going to have exclusive pieces for the disney store um as well as products that feature uh mini signature star wars pixar and marvel there's uh going to be a store pass it says tickets will be available beginning 9 a.m each day at the store pass desk located adjacent to the stage pass distribution area in hall a and the time slots are between 11 a.m and 5 p.m. There will be Disney books. There's going to be ink, uh, ink and paint, the women of Walt Disney's animation, uh, as well as a kiss goodnight. It's Richard Sherman, Floyd um, Norman, Oswald the Lucky Rabbit, the search for the lost Disney cartoons. Which is awesome. Art of coloring, Tim Burton's The Nightmare Before Christmas. Ooh, I need that one. <laughs> Ooh, I want that one. Right. Uh, some of the things they're going to have going on too are going to be some signings. So, uh, Pam Brandon is going to be d doing delicious Disney signings. Um, you know her as the Disney cookbook author. She works with all those great Disney chefs. Uh, there is Michael Singer. He does Disney Pirates, and it says the definitive co collector's anthology. Uh, Kingdom Keepers, Ridley Pearson will be there. Dave Smith with uh, Disney Facts Revealed. Um, Marty Scalar and Vanessa Hunt with Maps of the Disney Parks. So there's a whole bunch of cool people you can meet and get signings from um, and a lot of cool merchandise. That's awesome, Kristen. Thank you for that. Um, I'm looking forward to that as well. Um, another thing we're going to be geeking out about is the um and it's probably one of my favorite things um that we cover is the disney legend ceremony uh, every year um i have a lot of fun and joy gets into my heart because you want to see um the people that help build this disney thing that we love so much whether it's imagineers actors from abc or disney channel or, or the disney films or whatever and of course this year is unlike uh it's not like uh it's not any different we still have a bunch of great celebrities so let's talk about the inductees so um celebrating um 30 it's 30th anniversary this year the disney legends award was first given to fred mcmurray in 1987 and since then it's honored 276 disney legends including this year's honorees and the disney legends award is the highest honor that the disney company can bestow on an individual reserved for those very few who have truly made an indelible mark on the history of the walt disney company and that is from disney chairman and ceo bob Iger. it's a celebration of talent a recognition of achievement and expression of gratitude for the men and women whose work has significantly contributed to disney's enduring reputation for creative excellence so posthumously, they're going to be inducting Carrie Fisher. Unfortunately, uh, as you know, Carrie Fisher passed away tragically this past fall. But of course, you know her from uh, her uh, iconic role as uh, Princess Leia in the Star Wars saga. And it's so much uh, more. She's been in uh, several Dimension films, 
Uh, she also had a, a uh, accomplished uh, actor, author, playwright, screenwriter, and an outspoken advocate for mental health awareness. So uh, Carrie Fisher is going to be inducted. Um, we also have here Clyde Jerry um, Jeromini, who joined the Disney studio in 1931 and has animated several of the memorable Mickey Mouse, Silly Symphony, and Pluto cartoons. And throughout his career, Jerry contributed to more than 50 of the studio shorts, like Three Caballeros, The Adventures of Ichabod, and Mr. Toad, Cinderella, Peter Pan, and much, much more. He's also directed segments for the Mickey Mouse Club and the World of Color. Manuel Gonzalez is one of the 33 artists selected from thousands of applicants to join Disney in 1936. He took over penciling duties for Sunday, the Mickey Mouse comic strip from Floyd uh, Jefferson. And he also brought Mickey Mouse to newspapers for uh, nearly 40 years. Um, Manuel is one of the few to receive a Mouse Car Award from Walt Disney himself in 1966. How cool is that? Hmm. Um, Mark Hamill is going to be inducted, of course, uh, the legendary Luke Skywalker from the Star Wars saga. He also had a uh, recurring role on General Hospital. Did you know that? Um, I didn't know that. No. Yeah, how about that? Uh, he also performed on Disney's Miles from Tomorrowland. And Milo Murphy's Law has also provided the voice of the Joker in the Batman animated series, a role that earned him a BAFTA award. And of course, he returned and reprised his role as Luke Skywalker in The Force Awakens and the upcoming Last Jedi. So Mark is going to be there as well. Wayne Jackson, he uh, started his career as a Walt Disney Imagineer in October 65, and he was instrumental in the early development of audio animatronics technology, and he would go on to create Pirates of the Caribbean, the Haunted Mansion at Disneyland, eventually would take on construction installation of attractions of show systems at Walt Disney uh, World Resort and Tokyo and Paris. Jack Kirby. All right. Uh, one of my favorites of all time grabbed our attention in the spring of 1941 with Captain America, a character that he created with Joe Simon and then followed his debut with a prolific output of comic books uh, and Western romance. Of course, you know, he and, and co-creator Stanley would, int uh, would introduce a huge array of Marvel characters, including the Avengers, Hulk, Thor, Iron Man, Silver Surfer, Ant-Man, Wasp, Black Panther, S.H.I.E.L.D., and the Inhumans. Uh, he was inducted into the Eisner Hall of Fame in 1987's inaugural class and continued creating comic books throughout the 1990s before passing away in 1994. So, man, Jack Kirby, I have some of his art here in my office. So, uh, awesome. He's finally being recognized. And speaking of finally being recognized, the man, Stan Lee, the Generalissimo, um, started as an assistant comic book publisher in 1939 at Timely Comics, forerunner of then Marvel Comics. Of course, he made his uh, debut with Captain America in 1941. At the age of 18, he was promoted to editor. And in 1961, he teamed up with Jack Kirby to create the Fantastic Four and then co-created an enormous amount of those Marvel characters we all know and love. Iron Man, Hulk, Thor, Spider-Man, Doctor Strange, the X-Men, Daredevil, and much, much more. And he was uh, named the Chairman em uh, Emeritus in 19... What is it? Uh, I guess he was just basically the figurehead of Marvel. I guess after 1972. So there you go. And uh, I think we have a couple more. Uh, Gary Marshall, you guys know Gary Marshall because of his uh, uh, hit shows like The Dick Van Dyke Show. Um, how about The Odd Couple in 1970? How about Happy Days in 1974? Laverne and Shirley, Mork and Mindy. <laughs> and uh, the list goes on and on. Of course, he also did films like Pretty Woman and The Princess Diaries, Race to Witch Mountain and Hocus Pocus. So they're going to be celebrating the work of Gary Marshall. That's awesome. And Tony Award winning um, and Oscar nominated filmmaker Julie Taymor. Uh, her adoption, uh, adaptation of The Lion King debuted in 1997, becoming the most successful stage musical of all time. She was also nominated, uh, nominated uh, for Best Director, Costume Designer, Best Musical. And she, uh, she is currently directing M. Butterfly on Broadway, opening fall of 2017. And last but not we, least is Oprah. And uh, Oprah is uh, also being um, inducted. Of course, you know her from uh, voicing Adora from Princess and the Frog in 2009. Uh, amongst all the other things, of course, the Oprah Winfrey show. Uh, she's also uh, part of the... Um, Oh, I'm trying to think of the other films that she was in. They're uh, Touchstone Pictures, Beloved for Disney Touchstone. Also, The Women of Brewster Place. 
and uh, much, much more. So uh, congratulations to all those inductees. That's a lot of people being inducted this year. It's a lot. I'm, I'm, I'm really looking forward to Stanley and Jack Kirby, man. Those guys are, are great. Gary Marshall also for me. Uh, and of course, the Star Wars stuff too, uh, Luke and Carrie. That should be pretty cool. Um, yeah. Seeing that all, and there's nothing like the legend ceremony because of the music and the the ceremony itself. It's much like a lifetime achievement award or the Grammys. It's just it's just really nice to see, and they have a live orchestra, Jeff, for that. You know, Very, kind of like orchestra. celebrations they had uh, at the 40th celebration. You know, yeah, with John Williams. Yeah, yeah you never, you never know. I mean, really, something you know. <laughs> yeah, that was a surprise to everybody for Star Wars Celebration, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, uh, yeah. We may have another one. I think John Williams is on his way to becoming a Disney legend himself, uh, probably in the years to come. That's who I will lobby for next. Now that Stan Lee is being uh, inducted, uh, finally, all the years of uh, of rattling the cage has paid off, if you will. Yeah. All right, Jeff. Uh, what else are you going to be uh, talking about? What are some of the things? Your uh, Disney parks, I think we have. Oh on yeah, every single D twenty three expo has always turned up with some fantastic reveals uh, when it comes to Disney parks and resorts. And for this time around, Walt Disney Parks and Resorts will present to you a galaxy of stories. And they say that the Pavilion is literally going to ooh and ah all weekend long when it comes to everything that they're going to have to offer. And and I guess you should start off with merchandise. Uh, souvenir shoppers are going to be absolutely delighted to know that Imagineering exclusive merchandise store Mickey's of Glendale will return for all three days of the D23 Expo this year with specialty pins, limited edition collectibles, and merchandise that you literally cannot find anywhere else unless you're going to pay over the top dollar imaginable on eBay or anything else like that because you know stuff will show up. But if you want it at a decent price, you can get it at the D23 Expo. <laughs> a decent <Yeah>. price. <laughs> a decent, <laughs> price. A decent right? price of admission and everything else. You yeah, but, yeah, that's about the truth. If you've been saving up on here for that. Uh, lines will be long for that one. Uh, you can almost guarantee it. And it wouldn't surprise me if certain things, big time things, will sell out very quickly. So, yeah, that's why you have to get that store pass that Kristen talked about. Exactly. Because you can, yeah. you can, with that store store pass, you can get your quote unquote fast pass for those stores mm -hmm. once a day at different store locations. So plan out in advance, get your store pass for that day, and do your shopping for that store for that particular day, and then knock that's it right. out, and you're good. That's right. That's right. Because. That stuff, along with the other merchandise they offer at E23, always goes very, very quick. Uh, so oh, you need and, to jump on top of it. And I'll, and I'll say this just in addition, Jeff, um, but it also is helpful for you to wait until later on in the afternoon to go shopping because most of the lines have died down closer to the show ending. I so if imagine, you're shopping, yeah. if, you, if you don't want to wait in too many lines, we find that that's the case every year, isn't that, Kristen? The shops are packed in the very beginning because everybody's wanting to get that exclusive merch right then and there, but... A lot of that stuff you can get later on that afternoon when it's not so busy, right? Right. Yeah. All right. Sorry, Jeff. Go ahead. <laughs> well, no, that's okay. That's perfectly fine. Uh, also to enjoy when it comes to parks and resorts, Pirates of the Caribbean, 50 years of swashbuckling adventures in Disney parks. So if you be seeking adventure in salty old pirates, so oh, that's the place to be because uh, dead men may tell. No tales, but these Imagineers that are going to be at this panel uh, will be telling you about literally the early origins of the attraction to the latest technical achievements uh, that Pirates of the Caribbean Battle for the Sunken Treasure at Shanghai Disneyland showcases. So it's not just Disneyland and it's not just Walt Disney World. It's all the Disney parks. And when it comes to what, to what they've done with Pirates of the Caribbean in Shanghai is something truly special. Uh, so they'll be talking about that during that panel. Now, I think the really big one when it comes to panels and the Disney parks is when Disney Parks and Resort Chairman Bob Chapek is going to take the stage to really tell you about what is coming to the parks in the next few years. Kurt, of course, first and foremost, everybody's big question is going to be the Star Wars experience at Disney's Hollywood Studios and also Disneyland out in California. We're looking for more information. We're looking for details. We're looking for anything whatsoever to get ready for this huge opening that they're going to have 
in 2019. And, and hopefully Bob will have some really great updates when it comes to that kind of stuff. Now, if you're interested in just specifically like Walt Disney World, if you're a big Disney World fan, we're hoping that he will release a little bit of information about the much talked about reimagining, I guess I could say, of Epcot and Future World itself, because we know a lot of different things are looking a little worn out, I guess. You know, the paint is fading. The animatronic may not work right anymore. Interventions is pretty much an empty warehouse these days. So we're hoping that maybe he will update us, <coughs> excuse me, a little bit when it comes to Epcot uh, during the Parks and Resorts uh, panel. I'm sure he's going to include some stuff for uh, Disneyland out in California. Disney just recently got the rights back and everything when it comes to Disneyland Paris. So he might have some information on that as well for D23 because I think that happened a couple of weeks ago. So there may be big news on that. Now, if you want to talk about, oh, let's see here, Imagineering. Well, Inspiring Women of Imagineering. This should be a pretty good panel. Get a good dose of what they say girl power is with this awesome panel featuring some of just of the many talented women of the Walt Disney Imagineering portion of the company. Expect to hear some inspiring stories and get an insider's look at the Imagineering process from these creative and technical professionals building on Disney's rich legacy of female Imagineers. So that'll be going on as well. And finally, this is a really big one, and you'd be surprised um, when it comes to the voices of Disney parks, uh, whether it was in the 1970s or the 80s or today or anything else, people really associate with the voices of the Disney parks. And you can put names to some of the most recognizable voices heard across Disney parks as these talented voice actors. They'll be sharing their stories from their uh, vocal uh, vocations, as they call it, uh, that they've done throughout the Disney parks. And literally, some of the most fam famous lines that you are imprinted in your brain, that when they're up there on that stage and on that panel, they will start, you know, they'll say those exact lines. And the look on people's face faces are, uh, it's classic because you go, wow, that, that's what I hear every single time I get on the monorail or every single time we see Paint the Night or we see World of Color or maybe the brand new show at the Magic Kingdom. But these people will be there and an opportunity for you to, uh, to, to hear their backstory and everything else. So That's lots our favorite of stuff. Panel. That's yeah. our favorite panel. I keep hearing that as a favorite panel with, you know, Disney Park fans is <laughs> they love to see that panel. But, um, you know, Star Wars, I think, is going to be a big, big subject. Now that we have an opening year as uh, being 2019, uh, I don't think so much is going to be on Toy Story Land. Uh, I, I think they've released every, everything that they're going to release on that one, but they're still very tight-lipped when it comes to uh, some of the specifics on, on the Star Wars experience at Hollywood Studios and at Disneyland. So that's going to be very, very exciting to see if they do release some great information. So lots of stuff going on for Disney Parks and Resorts. I think so. Um, Kristen, did you have it? Thank you for Jeff. I uh, appreciate that. Kristen, did you have anything else you wanted to, to talk about? Yeah, they, uh, the uh, Walt Disney Archive stage schedule has been released. So these are uh, some of the events that you can check out. On Friday, they have Out of the Night When the Full Moon is Bright, 60 Years of the Horseman Known as Zorro. There's Walking with Giants, a, a virtual visit to Walt Disney's Hyperion Studios. Ludwig von Drake and the Walt Disney Colorful TV Revolution. Ink and, pa Ink and Paint, the Women of Walt Disney's Animation. Park Stars, original characters of the Disney parks. That's going to be awesome. This is the one that yes. I'm like, this would be so cool because you've got... Figment, Big Al, the, the Hatchbox Ghost, you know, all those kinds of things. So I think that would be very yeah, cool. Yeah, I, I love that. I love the fact that they're doing that. It's so cool. And then on Saturday, there is Mark Davis goes to wed the amazing artistry and design of the legendary Disney Imagineer. The Hidden Art of Disney, a behind-the-scene look at the Drew and the Pleased book series. Walt, Kay, and Marceline, A Very Big Small Town Story. Disney and Pixar did, did that. Advertisements and animated commercials. That would be kind of cool to see. 
Yesterday's Tomorrow, Disney's Magical Mid-Century. And then on Sunday, there is Writing with Walt, Researching the Magic Kingdom of Good Eating. Oh, now see, I would have to go to that one. That would just be awesome. Also, Sunday's got cool stuff going on. There's Walt Disney Signature Collection presents the 75th anniversary of Bambi. It's hard to believe Bambi's 75 years old. That's an old deer. <laughs> <laughs> Magic in the details. How <laughs> Disney historical collections continue to inspire. It does say that you'll learn how to preserve artwork, photography, and music. That's cool. Sleeping Beauty Castle walkthrough celebrating 60 years of Walt Disney's most charming um, tableau. Is that right? Sure. Um, Pop Disney. Six degrees of separation. And it says, and how and how were the many worlds of Disney, such as Marvel, Lucasfilm, and the Muppets all connected long before they were part of the Disney company, the Walt Disney Company? So that's kind of cool. So that's awesome. Those are what will be taking place in the Walt Disney Archive stage. Thank you very much, Kristen. That's one of my favorite areas. And uh, the archives are going to be back on the show floor uh, in years past. Um, um, prior to the last one, it was on the second floor. And uh, the, this last year, it's on the main floor. And this year, it's back on the main floor. And um, it's just such a great exhibit. So definitely check out the Walt Disney Archives. There's, uh, they don't bring those out too often. So it's a great opportunity for you to check out all that great stuff, including all the uh, the classic uh, comic strips, Walt's doodles, um, unearthed uh, animation, like uh, I believe uh, Jeffrey Epstein has recently been talking about uh, the unfinished uh, cartoon with Donald Duck, which is uh, awesome because I, as you know, Donald Duck is my homie. So uh, you definitely need to check that out. <laughs> For sure. I also want to quickly mention that there's going to be a go behind the scenes of Once Upon a Time, as well as meet the stars for your a ABC favorite shows, including Once Upon a Time, Blackish, um, so much more. So that's going to be great. And I know that the uh, gentleman, um, uh, Colin O'Donohue, who plays Hook, is going to be there in person. Oh. So that's going to be great because nice. uh, we, we, I, you may not have known this, uh, folks, but Once Upon a Time is losing some cast members, uh, major cast members moving into the next season. So uh, it'll be interesting to see how these characters take up the mantle and these uh, key stories are, are going to be portrayed moving forward. But it's going to be interesting to see them. Uh, as well you'll also be able to celebrate the anniversary of so many great things i mean we know that the uh, star tours is celebrating 30 years but you'll also be celebrating 20 years of hercules uh, you alluded to uh, 80 years of snow white in there as well but um J ashley Eckstein is going to be doing that mouse grade uh, costuming contest which is always a lot of fun at any convention you go to because that's where the coolest handmade costumes are being showcased whether you're dressed up like giselle or the rocketeer or iron man or anakin skywalker or merida it doesn't matter these costumes are out of this world it's definitely going to be something you'll want to check out because the grand prize is two thousand three hundred dollars for this costume contest that's huge so uh, Yvette Nicole Brown that we know from ABC's The Mayor as well as Talking Dead, she's going to be there joining as well, Ashley Eckstein. So that's going to be a lot of fun because I love Yvette Nicole Brown, right, Kristen? We're, we're big fans of her. She's fun. Yes, we are. Uh, you're also, uh, for those of you that are down with the Golden Girls, you can celebrate a celebration of friendship, laughter, laughter and cheesecake. Uh, you can join the show's creators and other special guests, including uh, Jim Colucci, the Golden Girls writer, Fran, uh, Barry Fanro, uh, Robert Spina, and Stan Zimmerman, and director John Schaefer for an unforgettable celebration of the history spanning 25 years after the final episode hosted by Imagineer and Golden Girls fan Morgan Richardson. So uh, the Golden Girls is making a comeback, and of course Betty White, uh, Disney legend is a great part of that. And who knows? Maybe Betty will be there too. That would be my oh, guess. That would be so uh, neat. Yeah. Betty White. Um, Cause she is wow. awesome like that. Right. Right. Um, let me see what else. Um, really quickly. 
Um, we discussed the uh, Legends of Imagineering. This is probably one of my next favorite um, must-see events. Uh, John Stamos, who I've met before, <laughs> by the way, will be leading this panel conversation. He's a huge Disney fan and a musician, of course, you know, him from the Beach Boys and, of course, uh, Full House. But he'll be interviewing Marty Sklart and Tony Baxter including Disney legend inductee Wayne Jackson, Jackson, and they'll be sharing their stories about the Disney experiences and the different attractions they've had a hand in throughout the years. Um, the street party. Okay, this is new. So for the first time at D23 Expo, a street party right on the D23 show floor will be making its way around. It's kind of like a parade, if you will. I wonder if it's going to take place at 3 o'clock, but it's going to be happening twice daily. It will feature a live band, Disney characters, grand marshals, including Stan Lee, and Mark Hamill, and the cast of Descendants too. So how cool is that? That they're going to wow. have a parade going throughout the convention floor with stars of the Grand Marshals. You can get up close and you can see them and take their picture and not have to pay 40, 50, 80, 100 bucks for them. <laughs> All right, you can just get up and say, hey, Stan, wave, you know, take a picture. Um, so that is gonna be really cool. All right, uh, that that is among one of my favorite things. I think the other thing I'm gonna mention too, is have you seen this Scrooge McDuck's money bin? Have you seen that? <laughs> no. Um, I I much like a lot of people are a big fan, um, are big fans of Ducktales and Scrooge McDuck. Um, Ducktales, of course, is coming this summer to Disney XD. I want to show you this picture, folks. Um, you are going to get a chance to to jump in to the money bin. Look at that! Oh, wow. <laughs> so look look at this. That's you're going to dump you're going to just literally jump in take a splash how how cool is this wouldn't you want to do that just take a take a dive into a pool <laughs> full of crazy. gold coins <laughs> that's what i want to do i want to do that all day long and get my picture taken oh, in wow. and look it's a 3 it's a 360 or a 180 type of experience so um my company has does, done this before with the, what we call a guitar jump but the fact that you get to uh, to jump in and get a 180 picture of you jumping into the pool before you hit the the coins, that's gonna be awesome. So that is yeah. probably another one of my my favorite must dos as well. Uh, one of the last things I'm gonna mention is the Marvel Pavilion. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Not only you're gonna be able to check out exclusive content from Marvel's Black Panther movie. Thor's Ragnarok, uh, Thor Ragnarok, which is hitting theaters later this year, but you're also going to play all those great video games uh, that Jeff alluded to, Marvel Super Heroes 2, Marvel vs. Capcom, and Marvel Heroes Omega. You'll also get a chance to chat with Joe Quesada, the creative force at Marvel Entertainment, so you'll get to check out that. He holds the key to so many uh, great comics and, and projects coming up for Disney and Marvel when it comes to TV, like uh, Cloak and Dagger on Freeform, as well as uh, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and much, much more. So he's going to be hosting a, a Q&A as well uh, that's going to be happening Friday, July 14th at 1 p.m. So check out Joe Quesada. And by the way, he is a great dude. He is a lot of fun. Uh, we're also going to have props from Thor Ragnarok and Black Panther as well. So that's going to be great. And uh, so I'm looking forward to that. There's going to be so much for you to see, do, and experience. Uh, we haven't even gotten to all the, the Marvel Studios stuff that they're going to be showing off um, because um, John Lasseter is going to be doing that on Saturday. If you're lucky and get that three-day pass, you'll be able to see what all they're going to be talking about in terms of Wreck-It Ralph 2, Coco. Um, uh, let's see, what else are they going to be showing? But this is the one where you won't be able to use your cell phones. Okay. Oh, um, okay. So that that's going to be all the upcoming films. They they oftentimes show uh, concept art, as Kristen had said, and uh, basically animatics for the film. So uh, I can only imagine that you're going to see the stars of Wreck It Ralph two and and uh, and uh, all those upcoming films, uh, Coco, and so much more uh, on there. So. Man, oh man, it's going to be a huge, huge, it's a lot of stuff, <laughs> stuff, man. I, I also heard from Jeffrey Epstein that they're going to be bringing the life size model of Star Wars land. So you want to make sure you check out that in its entirety. Um, Kristen and I had seen the, uh, the model that they had <laughs> of, um, of Pandora. 
so we can only hope that this time uh, it'll be true to life, true to scale. <laughs> so uh, for this particular experience, I'll let you go yeah. back and listen to our review. Um, and and, and uh, I know that, Jeff, uh, we're, we need to talk about your, your thoughts on Pandora. We're going to get to that in an upcoming show. But I know that uh, uh, time is of the essence. We want to make sure that you get an op- opportunity to check out everything that the D23 Expo has to offer. Um, thoughts, Jeff, or what, are, what may be one of your favorite experiences or a couple favorite experiences that you, you would check out if you were able to go? If Oh, man. Uh, I, or, other I than would the parks, because I think you'd probably want to go to the parks. <laughs> one. Right. I, w- I would probably be one of those people who would be you know camping out overnight in order to go to the parks and resorts uh, panel to see all of that. Uh, so considering I've never been to D23, uh, Nicole and I plan on going for 2019. Uh, we're already talking about it. We're already planning for it. Uh, so we'll, we, we will be going to that. But have never been before. Um, I think I would suffer from the same problem you and, and Kristen have, is just getting off the main floor and actually making it to the panels. Because I, I from pictures and video that I've seen, there is so much to look at just on the floors themselves uh, aside from the panels and the the different reveals and everything else because there's displays there's merchandise there's just a lot of people to talk to and and enjoy disney with i wouldn't know where to start to be honest with you um well games and and parks and resorts would be my two main ones that i would check out well right on well you know the good news is they do have a stage pass which is much like a fast pass so like the store pass <laughs> right um yeah. you're able to kind of plan and get your stage pass in advance for the panels that will probably be standing room only and yeah. there's also going to be overflow rooms where people can view the panels um maybe not in the same room but at least in a separate room on a monitor and right. experience a, a little bit of the same thing that uh, you're going to be able to see in person there um but for from Chris and I's perspective, I can tell you this, that I never felt like I was being gypped at all, even though I, I wasn't able to get into a panel because there's so much to see and do on the show floor. Kristen, would you agree? Yes. There is a lot to see and do. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so that was short. Well, see, that, that makes me more excited for 2019 when, when we get to go because yeah. that's... It's it's really a shame that I'm not able to go and, and Kristen's not able to go um, just because of my work schedule. Um, this is going to be the first one we're we're going to miss, and uh, I hate it. I hate uh, the fact Kristen, that we're missing. you know, a uh, solo trip, Kristen. <laughs> <laughs> well, Make a even sacrifice. On the, <laughs> even on the um, on the floor, like you can meet some celebrities because I ended up meeting um, Paige O'Hare. And getting her autograph. That's right. The, the voice floor. of Belle. And I ended up meeting Kevin Feige and Joss Whedon. Which and we great. made friends with Brian Rude that way. Made friends with Brian Rude, uh, Star Wars artist, Disney artist as well. And um, there's so, so many. when you walk around. <laughs> yeah, I met several Disney legends walking around. Hey, and when we were in the park, we ended up uh, meeting, uh, well, at least experiencing the Tiki Room. Uh, at Disneyland with George Lucas. Uh, That's Lucas right. I remember was that. Gonna get, yeah. You know, get uh, inducted to the, you know, Disney Legends, which was really cool. But like I said, there there are so many things to see, do, and shop for for the D23 Expo. So you want to make sure you get your tickets while you can. This is a once in a lifetime opportunity, and when it comes around, uh, there's nothing like experiencing it in person, in the flesh. July. 14th through 16th this year, 2017, Anaheim Convention Center. Three-day tickets are still available, and single-day tickets available for Friday and Sunday's show. Uh, As we record this, there are 16 days left, so you want to make sure you check it out. So much, like I said, to see and do. You can download that app and plan in advance and come in with a plan. Uh, Figure it out with a family. Find out where your uh, rendezvous points are going to be if you you get split up for any reason. And... uh, the vendors and the different exhibits and sponsors like Target have so many great interactive things on the show floor, um, so much to see and do. And we didn't even get uh, cracking on the whole Disney Channel and the, the Walt Disney Records uh, section of things. There's going to be so many of those stars if you're fans of the Disney Channel shows uh, like Kristen and I are, uh, Girl Meets World. Um, you know, there's going to be so much of that stuff going on during the convention, man. Um, 
Uh, and I'd love for you to uh, let us know what your favorite things and what you're awaiting. And uh, if you do, uh, let us know if you want to be on the show and maybe give us a little show uh, trip report. That would be awesome. And we hope to have some of our Source of Radio correspondents on our sister uh, uh, Source of Radio network to talk about it um, in the coming weeks post D23. So uh, thank you so much for tuning into the program. Jeff, where can people see you there on the internet and interact with you? Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at DW underscore 60 and also the uh, Facebook page as well. Kristen. You can find me at dining at Disney.com on social media. It's dining at Disney. You can download the dining at Disney podcast on iTunes or stream it on Stitcher. Very good. You can also uh, check out Kristen and myself there at WDW Teak Room on demand at wdwtkroom.com and on iTunes, Stitcher Radio, and of course, listen to us live um, for a great show there on Sorcerer Radio Fridays at seven or eight a.m. Eastern. You can also check me out with all my social media at jedimasketeer.com. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'm sorry that Eric is under the weather, but hopefully, uh, we'll be back soon with all four of us talking more great Disney, uh, Marvel, and Star Wars for you. And thank you so much for listening and checking out our show on YouTube and spreading the word. It's better after dark, and we'll see you next time.